Hey guys, it's C2 here. Um, I'm trying something a little bit different with my mic this time. I have it further away from my face. I also changed some of my audio settings. And I eliminated all background noise away. Alright, I eliminated all that's in my room. So, uh, hopefully it's a little bit crisper, a little bit clearer. If not, um, I'm probably going to be getting a new headset here sometime. Hopefully, probably not. But, uh, oh well. So, um, well, like I said, I'm doing a tutorial, if I said that. Um, doing a tutorial today on how to make a path. Oh, it deleted it. Oh well. Um, how to make a quick little path in Photoshop if you have your object here and it's kind of messed up, your little 2D logo. But uh, we can fix this. We can make it look a lot crisper, a lot cleaner, and uh, it's gonna save you guys a lot of time and energy when trying to pen tool those strenuous logos that people make that have absolutely no relevance to the team name or anything like that so um this is gonna help you guys gonna make your workflow quicker and it's also just a nice little trick so um this is really simple even your two-year-old brother could do it um you're gonna open your file you're gonna make sure it has a transparent background you're gonna delete this layer but you're not gonna have that layer so um you're gonna press control you're gonna click click down on the thumbnail and what that's going to do is it's going to pull a selection up on your layer. And then you're going to hit the path tab. Paths tab up there. I'm sorry. And then you're going to come down here to the middle where if you let it sit, it says make work path from selection. You're going to click that. And boom. Within a matter of 30 seconds, we have a beautiful, well-placed work path for our logo. And, uh... Obviously, this isn't the best job it can do. This is gonna. This works really well on uh, boxy work, anything like that. Um, you can always come in here manually fix it. This does actually save you a lot of time, though, especially if you're doing bigger projects. Um, but yeah. So um, this also works really well if you're doing 3D work, and I'll show you what I mean right now. But first off, you're gonna have to go to File and then Export and then Pass to Illustrator. You're gonna save your work path. Now I'm just going to save over that because that's from my last trial of doing this because I'm on my third attempt. So, uh, third, third, I don't remember that saying. Third one's a charm. Yeah, that's what it is. So, um, now that we saved it, we're going to open up Cinema 4D and we're going to drag it in there. And scale, I have mine at point 0.3, connect splines, blah, blah, blah. And it pulls it into your Lightroom, which you will, you should have a Lightroom. I'm not for demonstration purposes. Um, so you have your spline, and what you're going to want to do when you have it in here, just to make it more natural looking, you're going to come to Intermediate Points, and you're going to click Natural. And then you can bump up all these points in, in here. And uh, what that's going to do is basically this spline is a bunch of points. From my belief, it's a bunch of points. And uh, these numbers, if you bring the numbers down, you'll see it uh, makes it all boxy. That's kind of cool, actually. But uh, it makes it boxy. And uh, the more points you have, the crisper it is. So um, if we come here and we grab Extrude Nerbs for a 3D extrusion, uh, there we go. You can see it pulled it out. It, I'm sorry, it didn't pull it out. That's kind of sexual. Um, it extruded the spline, and uh, it looks really good, nice and crisp. That just saved me hella long for if I had to pen tool that from hand. So um, I hope you guys can take some points from this, learn from it. Um, like I said, it's quick, it's easy, it's not the best way, but it does work. So uh, hopefully you guys like this tutorial. See ya. I'll leave in comments in the description if my mic was any better or worse. Thank you. Have a nice day.